food I've seen out of both uh, the states and Canada, in ter- I mean, small businesses go out of business every day. Correct. Right? There's a lot of churn, and with this, uh, this general small size of design firms, that churn is actually quite high. Yep. And as we spoke to before about designers being a bit more on the creative side than on the analytical side, I assume there are aspects of running the business, an interior design business, that designers need more help with Mm -hmm. and less help with. Yep. Totally true. So there are specialized coaches, specialized services, right, out there. And I think a good coach is going to refer you out when you need it. Right. So I think you need to have um, a legal person kind of on your team or in your back pocket. You need to have an accountant on your team or in your back pocket. I'm not going to serve as that person. I can refer you to people, but um, you need those those team members. But speaking about like small businesses going out of business, there is a statistic out there and I could pull it out if I had to. But it's something like 30% of all businesses never make it past the first year. Yeah. Okay. And the re, but the businesses that have a business plan have a much higher percentage or success rate, right? right? They're not as likely to go out of business. And I think what I see a lot in new businesses are that they're just starting because it, because they don't know what to do first, second, or third. They maybe t- are turning a hobby into a business um, or something that they were doing on the side into something full time, and they don't have a business plan. So I highly encourage all my clients to create some sort of business plan. Not every business plan fits every client, too. Like there's different styles and ways of doing it. But I think that's kind of the number one thing that you can do to help ensure that you don't go out of business. Right. And speaking as a non-creative, yes. uh, I, I love process, I love business plans, I love all that stuff. But almost every time I've spoken with a, a designer or somebody else in a creative industry, it's almost bringing up that topic gives them like anxiety. Yes. Like, where do I start? How do I do this? So then they go looking on websites and saying, okay, okay and they find some form they can fill out and, and it creates a 10 page business plan, right. but they don't, but they don't really understand what they've just done. Yes. So that's kind of what I was getting with the last question. You led into that perfectly where something like a business plan, organizing that is something where a little hand holding I think could go a long way for years to go in that business. Yes. So I, um, we could totally go online and print out 20 templates, right? And if we were disciplined enough, we could sit down and create the business plan right by ourselves at our, at our desk. I think that, although that is better than nothing, it's really not effective. I think the way someone should be creating a business plan is in a more of a dialogue format. Someone asking questions, someone helping you think through the process. And unless it's the type of business plan that can serve as a working document that you refer to on a monthly or quarterly, maybe even daily basis, there isn't really a purpose in doing it. So it's not the plan necessarily, it's how you use it. So when I do a business plan with clients, oftentimes I'll do a VIP day and we'll just spend the whole day creating the plan. Right. And nine times out of 10, you know, I'll say to them at the end, okay, so you can go on your merry way and have a go for it, have a great time. Or would you like help continuing to work through this consistently over the year? And, you know, yes, I would like help. So, what, so using that document, that document serves as kind of the foundation or the reference point that we go back to over and over again to kind of check in with ourselves. Are we on track? What did we say? Does this still make sense? And it doesn't have to be something that's static. It can be, change. it's changeable as you change, but you've got to have some sort of map and that serves as the map. I mean, interior designers know that better than anyone else. You've got to map out your room to see if everything's going to fit right? And are all the colors going to coordinate? And so what's the plan? 
So this is just a different kind of plan. <laughs> oh yeah, one one hundred percent. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, my wife is the principal designer for our residential company, and uh, as as excellent as she is at designing, yeah. she is has a, a memory of all of these details that just boggles my mind. Mm -hmm. The amount of balls that are in the air every day, it's crazy. It's crazy. It is. It is. So, I mean, when I say that designers are creative and maybe not analytical, I, I think I'm not being accurate because they do handle the business side of the business very well, but maybe not the the number crunching and the spreadsheets and the business plans and all that kind of no, stuff. No, and I think every a good business plan has both two, two parts to it. It's got a part which is the vision for the business and interior designers are usually pretty good at that part mm -hmm. um but then the second part is more of the action part so what do we need to do in order to make this vision a reality and that's sometimes where they need a little more help a little more guidance a little more prodding and, a, and support to make that happen 